Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back. Today we are installing an aftermarket seat into the S3, particularly particularly the Recaro Sportster CS. Um, so we're going to throw that in. Welcome back to the channel. It's John Champagne S3 here with another video and today we are installing an aftermarket seat into the S3. So this is my Recaro Sportster CS. We have got this in, um, I guess it's like a suede inner and it's got a gray uh, screen lettering. Missed on my other videos we did uh, vinyl accent on the back to kind of replicate what the Recaro Sportster CS Nurburgring edition has. So it's pretty much exactly the same with the exception of um, additional stitching over here and then I believe some of the accents around here are red as well. Let me show you what it is replacing. So I actually changed the seats on my 27S, 2017 S3. These are actually from the pre-facelift edition uh, with gray inserts. So I just wanted a little bit of color into the interior. So I actually swapped my facelift seats for pre-facelift seats and I did actually like how it had the actual S3 here as opposed to having a, just an S which uh, all of the newer models come with. Now uh, very simple, first we're going to start by uh, removing this seat and then we're going to show you how to get the aftermarket seat uh, onto the brackets. I got over here, we got some bride uh, seat rails and brackets which I'll be installing the seat onto and then we will throw the seat onto the car. So for starters, make sure you uh, position the seat all the way to the front first, and then by that, we can actually access the two bolts. We got one here, one on the other side, which I've already taken out. A T50 we'll be using to remove this. Once you get the two back bolts out, what we're gonna do, we're going to move the seat now all the way to the back to expose the bolts at the front just enough so that we can uh, get these covers exposed and uh, be able to access it. So these covers actually just pop off with a flathead. It's just a plastic covering and it will expose the bolts underneath. Just tuck it under and lift it up a little bit just like that and you got the bolt right here. So we're going to remove uh, the bolts on both sides and uh, we'll be able to just pull this seat right out after we unplug the harnesses. As you can see here the, the seat is able to flip up and we're able to access the underneath the carpet here to access the wiring. But before we do that we're going to unplug the battery first. Uh, we just want to make sure that um, um, because I feel like if you remove the seat and then all the wiring while the power is still on the ECU is going to sense that there's something wrong and trigger fault code. So. We're gonna try to avoid fault codes if we can. Just flip up this cover and we're going to disconnect the negative terminal side. All you're gonna need is a 10 millimeter to uh, loosen up the nut. Remove the terminal and then make sure it's uh, not touching again. So I like to just place the fabric cover, cover over it if you have it. There's a little tab here. We're just gonna pull up this carpet and lift up some of this uh, padding and we're going to have access to the uh, seat harness so very simple we're just going to push the tabs associated with them so they're just uh, a push tab and we're just going to pull up so push the tab push the tab and then pull straight up they will disconnect very easily everything is unplugged i got the harness disconnected so there is nothing now holding the seat in so um, what my recommendation would be is to push your wheel in as far as it can go and maybe tilt it up so it gives you enough space to maneuver this seat outwards. So what we want to do, we are going to want to rotate the seat base outwards and then kind of pull outside like this. Too bad. 
Okay, so I'm going to answer this question for you guys because there seems to be a lot of confusion and um, there's not really many sources of um, correct information online when I was doing my research. If you are only changing the driver's side seat like I am doing in this video, all you're really going to need to do to make sure there's no airbag warning light is you're going to have to uh, connect a resistor. Now the resistor is actually going to go where the yellow plug goes, where we uh, took it out from the inside. We have got the plug right over here. So what a lot of people do, they end up uh, cutting the wire here. You yeah, know, I'm cutting the wire to this yellow connector and then soldering or connecting uh, resistor to the end of the wires. Now for me, I'm not a fan of cutting up the OEM harness because you know, anything can change. Maybe you change your mind somewhere down the road and you want to reinstall your seat. I think a lot of people would like to go through like a plug and play option. So there is a way you can do that without uh, cutting this up. So you can go get yourself some jumper cables like I did on Amazon. So basically these are what the jumper cables are. They can come in a pack of five, you kind of just separate them. So this is a quick example of what the jumper cable looks like. It's just a three kind of prong female connector and it's uh, female ends on both sides. So on the one side will go the resistor that you would attach here. And um, I'm going to probably link on the bottom here uh, what type of resistor you're going to need. I believe it's a 3.3 ohm. I'll let you know what works for me and I'm just going to link it down over here. And then uh, so what the resistor goes on one end and on the other end you plug this in to where the original uh, yellow connector went. So uh, no need to cut this one up at all. Instead you're just going to replace this and put this uh, jumper cable in there with a the resistor on the other end and then you just tie everything up. So the process is going to be different if you're going to be replacing the both the driver's seat and the passenger seat. In this case you will not only need a jumper on the driver's side but you will also need to uh, take apart the occupancy sensor on the passenger seat. Now this would require you to actually rip up the seat and take out the occupancy sensor which is actually like a, a flat pad that activates when there is weight on top of it. So what most people do is they find um, a seat with a very similar uh, part number that works with the vehicle. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that in this video. However, uh, when I do uh, decide to do that later down the road, make, I will definitely make sure I link the video up in the corner here somewhere. All right, so here's an example of uh, what I was talking about earlier. See where the yellow connector used to go? In its place, I just put the jumper cable and I will source a resistor to make sure I add it to the other end. Now, like I said, I will link down in the description the type of uh, resistor you're going to need and then aside from that we're only going to need to plug in uh, the black connector here which is for the uh, seat belt sensor. Now from the actual OEM seat what we're going to do is we're going to actually unbolt the seat buckle actually and then the other thing that you're going to need is the the black plug over here that attaches to the uh, seat belt buckle. So this is actually a triple square, uh, specifically an M8. So uh, let's go ahead and remove this. Uh, this can be stripped very easily. So like I said, triple square M8. So now all we're really gonna do is, see the buckle is disconnected. We're gonna follow the wire for the buckle because we're gonna need to disconnect it. Now it is attached by clips over here are really easy to pop up. You can use your a trim tool. Some of these clamps just kind of slide right off. The other ones will need to be popped open. Okay, so you pop up those clips and then we can start taking this buckle off. So just keep routing this small wire that's attached to the buckle and then we're gonna have to disconnect it from this main a harness. You could also use a flathead if you'd like, if that's a bit easier. Um, because the area is pretty tight. I'm just going to cut the zip tie on it just to uh, so I can unravel this a little bit. So, upon uh, further 
uh, inspection and tracing of the seatbelt buckle wiring. It looks like um, it goes into a, a Y split. So we'll trace this wire and then there's also a Y split and it's actually connected somewhere else down here. Now this sensor here or this uh, piece is actually uh, bolted in so we'll get that unbolted and I believe that should be all we need to do to uh, free this up. I also uh, cut off the um, zip ties that were you know, holding the casing together as it'll make it easier to kind of slide out the plug I need to access. That uh, looks to be a T20. So we're gonna remove that right now. And yeah, it just pops right up. I just uh, put some pressure on it. That's what it looks like. It's just a simple clip. Uh, you just push, see where the screw goes. You That side you just, that's the one you kind of push upward to prop it open. And now I should be able to free the seat belt buckle now. This one, I can probably pull the plug point. Yep, it looks to be the black one. Pull it through the casing. Now you take this and then the rest of this uh, we're not going to use. Yellow plug will not have to be plugged in. This is for your airbag. We are using the jumper cable, which I showed you in the last step and we're putting a resistor onto that. Now this is the Recaro seat, so it actually came off of an M2, so this bracket obviously will not work for the 8V platform. So we're gonna just unbolt it, and then I will show you the uh, proper bracket and uh, the sliders. The next day. So it looks like we ran into a little bit of issue here. So it looks like the bolts that were originally on the slider, uh, this seat came off of an M2, uh, these bolts they used were are very soft. The head is extremely soft and not to mention they put this on with blue Loctite. So upon trying to remove these uh, bolts, the head's stripped. Now I was able to get a few of them out. Um, I got one of them out normally. The second one I had to drill and extract and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to do the same for the last two here. So I'm just going to show you guys a quick way of um, how to do this and you know these things happen with cars you know as much as you like to see installation guides and whatnot things like this do seem to happen. So what you're going to get is uh, like a kit like this they come with little extractor tools. This is a full kit I got over here. Uh, so this comes with uh, drill bits over here so you have to drill into the bolt and then you have these little uh, pieces here depending on the size of the bolt you kind of hammer them in once the once you drill a hole uh, deep enough you hammer this piece into that and this is used as like a point for uh, removing the uh, bolt and then you start uh, going uh, counterclockwise and the bolt should come out if you put it far enough so we twist towards the counterclockwise and let's just hope it grabs. Come on. All right, there we go, yes. There we go, success. Grab your seat rails and sliders. Um, I have the bride ones. So um, this over here, you can't really mess this up. Right here it says left hand, which I would say is the driver's side. And you can't really mess this up. You gotta remember that this little um, handle for the adjustment points down with the seat. And then you look to see where the belt buckle is. And on this side, because it's we're in North America, the belt buckle should be on the right side. We're just gonna secure the bolts onto the seat rails. And after that, we should be good to throw it into the car. Um, some people, I guess, use blue Loctite. Um, there are others who don't use them. I don't think they're really needed unless you feel like they're backing out. Just obviously use the right Allen head when you're tightening this up. And if you need to get to the back ones, you are actually just going to pull the uh, lever and then move the rail um, downwards to expose the holes. 
So the, these are all bolted in. Uh, make sure before we put this into the car, we actually test out those sliders. Push the handle up and make sure it's working. Um, for me personally, I had to actually use some washers uh, in between the bracket where it meets with the seat. Like maybe I can just... Oh, fuck. Oh. Oh, God. So I, I used a few uh, washers here to space it out. The reason why I did that was because when I pulled the slider, it was actually, the bar here was actually hitting this portion right here. So it wasn't a very smooth transition. I didn't like that. So I put some washers in between there, about two on each side and uh, it slides perfectly. Next thing we're gonna do, the belt buckle. We're gonna bolt the one we took off the OEM seat. We're gonna throw that onto the Recaro right now. So we got the seat buckled on, make sure it's in a position. I, I sat in it before I secured the bolt here to make sure it was in a, in a nice position for me when I sit in the seat. Now, uh, obviously the wire from the seat belt buckle, make sure it goes in between this empty space between the uh, raised brackets as you don't want to um, get this wire caught when you're moving back and forth with the sliders. So similar to how we took out the seat, we're just going to do the reverse of that. So we're going to bend this forward. Great. Perfect. Let's get a closer look. Alright, so we've tightened these down over here. We put some washers in between the bolt and the bracket. I might be actually changing these bolts out as the inside front and back is a little bit tough to tighten now I might swap them out with some hex heads or something like that but um, for now they're pretty secure the black cable that we have uh, for the seat belts we're gonna go ahead and plug that one in right here so this is the example of the jumper cable and on the other end I have a 3.3 ohm resistor that's plugged into the right side and the middle and uh, you're gonna just have to cover this with electrical tape. But basically, you want to make sure that the right side and the middle side, as I connected the different prongs of the resistor, they go straight in. So they correspond with the right and middle side of the prongs here as well. So we're currently in, a v we're currently in VCDS. Uh, just to show you, you go to select control modules, then we want to go to airbags. We're going to check the fault codes here. Okay, now we want to clear these codes. Codes have been erased, which is awesome. And we go over here, and we can obviously, aside from my other check engine lights, the airbag light is now gone. So we're going to start this car up and uh, see if it pops back up. Oh, you look at that. No airbag light, guys. We are in the clear. Alright guys, so that is how you install an aftermarket seat into your MQB, whether it's like the Golf or the Audi A3 platform. Um, I also showed you guys how to delete the airbag light in your car so you can enjoy a nice sweet seat in the car and not have to worry about safety issues. I'm going to link um, a URL in the description of the parts I talked about to delete the airbag light. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys found this helpful, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing to my channel. It'll help me out, guys, a lot. Uh, take a look for more videos just like this coming out. This is John, and thank you for tuning in. Happy modding as always. We'll catch you guys at the next one.